In this video, I'll be going through the binomial option pricing model to price European options. Let's, let's say, input a few parameters here. Let's say uh, we have a stock price, uh, which is 40, and the exercise price or the strike price is uh, 40 as well. And the time to maturity, I'll assume it's, let's say, two years. Okay, and the risk free rate is probably 5%, and the volatility is uh, 20%. Okay, with the number of steps here uh, will be, let's say, two steps for now. Okay, and then uh, let's say this is a call option. So I will illustrate how this is done in Excel itself. And then later on, I will implement this in VBA. Now I'll implement the binomial option pricing model in Excel without VBA. So let's define, so we have two years here, for example. So let's start from time zero, time one, and time two. Okay, so that's two years, okay, with two steps here. Okay, from zero to one and one to two, that's two steps. Of course, if the numbers here change later, then uh, we will have to vary this uh, implementation. So this is just a simple example before we move on to the VBA implementation. So I'll start with the initial price, okay, which is uh, 40 like in this case, and then the price will then move up and downwards in each step. So for that, we will need the up factor and the down factor. Okay, so to have the up factor, we need the up factor U and also the down factor D. Okay, and before we do that, we also need the incremental time step, which is DT. Okay, so that this is the incremental time for each period. So this will be equals to the time to maturity divided by the number of steps. Okay, so that means uh, every incremental time period is one year in this case. So the R factor will then be equals to a formula which allows the binomial option pricing model to approach the value that is derived under the Black-Scholes option pricing model as the number of steps becomes larger. So that formula is exponential of the volatility multiplied by the square root of the DT, which is the time factor here. Okay, so that's our R factor. Okay, 1.2214 each step up. And then for the down factor, this will be the inverse of the up factor, right? So we are done. So we can now implement this. So for the up movement, I will take the initial price multiplied by the up factor. Okay, so that's the price in period one. And then the price in period two is the price in period one times the up factor again. Okay, and then if the price moves down here, then the price will be multiplied by the down factor. Okay, now we focus on the down factor. So we'll take the initial price multiply by the down factor and then we'll multiply it again by the down factor. Okay, so you can see of course uh, for a two period model, this can be implemented easily, but if the time period becomes larger, okay, then it will be of course tedious to do it this way repeatedly. Now, this is only for the underlying price, okay, in two periods from now. And uh, we'll use this to compute the exercise value of the option, okay, given whether it's a call or whether it's a put. So of course, I'll just uh, do this for a European call option, okay. So this again, 0, 1, and 2. I'll just label this here. Now for a European call, uh, so I'll start from this point. Uh, so when we calculate the intrinsic value, because it's European option, it can only be exercised at maturity, which is two years from now. So I will calculate the exercise value at maturity, the expiration of the option. So to do that, I'll take the maximum of zero or the underlying price, okay, which is at this moment for this period is 59.67 minus the strike price, which is 40. I'll lock that in. Okay, and we'll calculate that. So it's a 19.67, which means the op call option is in the money. So I'll copy it for the next two steps. So you can see that uh, for this is at the money and for the bottom price, this is out of the money. All right, so we're not gonna calculate the exercise value here anymore, okay, uh, because the option is European. So what we'll do now is we'll have to discount these exercise values back to time one and then back to time zero. Now, before we do that, we'll need a probability called the risk neutral probability. Okay, so I'll just define that as the risk neutral probability. I'll call it P in this case. Okay, so this P here is based on a formula. Okay, so it's based on the exponential of your risk free rate multiplied by the incremental time step. Okay, minus the down factor. And then we divide by the up factor minus the down factor. Okay, so this is P. Of course, uh, this is the probability that the price uh, 
the price will move upwards every step and then there's one minus p which is the risk neutral probability that the price will move downwards so that's one minus p okay so that's our probability so we're not done with that so what we need to do is let's say at time one okay when the stock price is up so at this point we will take the weighted average of the exercise value of the option so i'll take b15 times the exercise value plus uh, one minus p times the uh, times the exercise value if the value is zero if it goes down okay and then uh, once you've done this weighted average we'll need to discount it back by one period so to do that i'll take the exponential of uh, then negative okay which is the inverse and then we'll multiply that by the risk rate times the incremental time dt okay so that will be the pv okay of this exercise value of these two values at period one now of course for convenience sake i will just uh, lock these cells in okay and then i can just copy it to the to this particular cell so again uh, this is to show you that uh, the formula is pasted over and the formula is linked to the right cells so this zero here is the pv of the weighted average of the payoffs okay of uh, this call option at these two points now to find the option price at time zero i'll i'll move on to the next step which is to actually to repeat the same thing okay i could just let's say copy and paste it here okay you can see that uh the link the cells are linked to the right parts okay and uh, this is the discounted present value of these two payoffs okay so that's uh, 5.94 okay so this is the model price for this call option that's european okay with a two period expiration okay with these uh, details of course i could change the volatility you can change the risk rate to see how this plays out now uh, i'll just execute this uh, also using the european put option just to make it complete okay so i'll just paste it over and call this european put okay but for this case uh, i will need to link it back okay so the formula will not be the same for the put option so this will be the maximum of zero and then i'll take the strike price for the put okay minus the underlying price okay so that will be the payoff of the put option then i'll copy it make sure the cells are linked correctly and then lastly is the price okay uh, at the bottom so that's 13.19 so that's 40 minus 26.81 in this case so again, uh, the, uh, we don't have to update these cells because they're linked to the same cells as before. And we'll see that the model price for the European put will be 2.13. So that's how we do it, of course, uh, using just Excel. Okay, But uh, if you were to change the time to maturity of the, or the number of steps, then uh, the model will have to be changed and it becomes very troublesome uh, to redo it. So of course, that, that is why in the next part, I'll show you how this is done in VBA and how it simplifies the computation of the option value. Now to implement this in VBA, we'll start by opening the VBA editor. So I'll press alternate F11. Okay, so we are, we'll go into the editor for the VBA. So in this case, I will first insert a module. Okay, and then in the module here, okay, we'll start to code so let's say we'll call this the function of uh, binomial euro b, uh, b, uh, binom euro okay and then uh, we'll uh, create the inputs here so i need to input the stock price the exercise price the time to maturity the risk rate the volatility i'll call it sigma and then the number of steps and then the type of option okay and this is as a string because we'll type this as call or put option then <coughs> You, once you press enter then you see that it creates an end function here All right so i'll just press tab to make it look nice and then uh, first thing we'll define here is the time step the dt this is the incremental time which is the time to maturity divided by the number of steps okay and then we have the up factor the up factor is the exponential function okay and then this is based on the sigma times the square root of dt so i'll use dt to power of 0 0.15 this denotes uh, square root and then d the down factor will be 1 over u and then the risk neutral probability will be the exponential just put bracket exponential and then this is a risk rate times dt 
minus the down factor, close bracket, and then we divide by up factor minus down factor. Okay, so we have all the inputs we need. So I'll now start to code, okay, to get to the option uh, price, okay, but uh, and then return the value to this function. So I will start by setting the function value to zero, okay, as a start. So then we'll create a, loop, a for loop. So let's say if I create for i, okay, equals to zero, okay, starting from time zero to time n, okay, which is two steps here, uh, as we did previously, okay. So then uh, this is the part where you create next i, okay. So this is to close the loop. Now in this case, uh, we the user can type call or put option as the type option. So let's say I will create a select case. Okay, so let's say create a select case for type option, this string here. Okay, so this uh, to close it, let's type and select. So if the user enters call, so I'll just type call here, then the value of the function, the binom euro here, will be the previous value, okay, which at this moment is zero at the start. Then we'll add in the combination. Okay, so this is the app you use application dot combine. Okay, and then this will be based on the number of steps. Okay, and then we will choose from the time step here. Okay, times the risk neutral probability. And then this is raised to the power of i. And then we'll multiply that by 1 minus p. And then we'll raise that to the power of n minus i. Okay, and lastly we multiply by the, the maximum of. So that's max of the of zero or the stock price times the up factor to power of i multiplied by the down factor to the power of n minus i and then we minus the strike price okay so that's for the call option now for the next part if the user enters put option put then the value of the function here uh, so everything will be the same except for the last part for put option. Uh, we just have to switch the k over. So this is just k minus okay the option value, the the underlying value at expiration. Okay, then uh, we'll end select here. So this is to give us the value of the stock okay at the expiration. So the last step is to discount the values all the way up to t equals to zero. So to do that, we'll just take binom euro equals to uh, exponential negative of the receipt rate times the t this time we multiply by the total time to maturity and then we multiply by the final value that we got from this uh, loop here okay so that will give us the final value to return to the function okay so we are done here so let's try it out okay now if i move back to the function uh, i'll just type this is my option price okay and this is base this is based on the call option here, so I'll just start type equals to binom euro, okay, and then I'll select the stock price, the strike price, the time to maturity, the risk rate, volatility, number of steps, and the type of option, and then I'll just type enter, and then you see I'll get the same values here, okay, 5.93656, okay, if you want to do it for put, I'll just change this to put option, then you'll get 2.13005. Now, of course, if you want uh, this price option price to approach the Black Shoals option pricing model, then the number of steps will have to be large. Okay, so you can you can code in the Black Shoals uh, option pricing model in to compare versus the binomial option pricing model. So, of course, I can do something like if I if I want to do something like maybe a, a two years, but let's say with one hundred steps. Okay, you can do that. Okay, so or you can do uh, over one thousand steps. So each time, of course, the DT will become smaller, okay, uh, and the option price will, of course, change, okay, uh, depending on whether it's a call or put. Now, to show what the VBA code is actually doing, I'll change the number of stats back to 2. So in the code, you have seen that it starts from i equals to 0 to n, okay, so i equals to 0 here means that at the maturity of the option will start from the bottom of the knot, okay, the lowest knot here. So i equals to zero refers to in this case the bottom knot, zero, one, and two. This is n, okay, which is the number of steps here. 
So in this case, uh, we will first calculate okay what is the combination okay of uh, two, which is the time the number of steps here, and then based on i equals to zero, so this is zero. Okay, then we multiply by the probability, the risk neutral probability, which in this case is p to power of zero as well. Okay, and then uh, we will multiply by one minus p. Okay, and then to the power of the number of steps n minus zero. Okay, and then we multiply by the payoff. Okay, which we have here. So of course, uh, to make things uh, easier for us to refer to, I'll call this time. Uh, z this is step one, zero, one, and two. Okay, so this will refer back to zero, zero, okay, and zero. Okay, so uh, uh, meanwhile, I will lock this B15, okay, and B7. So I'll continue to the next step. So I'll just copy over, okay, to step one and then to step two. So this will give us the weighted average sum of all the payoffs and then what we need to do is just sum it up okay just sum it up here and then we just need to discount this number so we multiply by the exponential negative risk free rate okay multiply by the time okay so we'll discount from time two all the way to time zero so that gives us the value of the call option okay so that's what the code is actually doing so for all these nodes here is calculating the the total permutation, the total combination, and then uh, they'll take the weighted average, which is multiplied to the probability, and then multiplied to the payoff, and then it is discounted all the way back to time zero. So the three base methods is uh, usually used to price options, not only for plain vanilla options like uh, like European options, it can also be used to price American options or barrier options, digital options, Asian options, and many others. So it's very easy to implement, okay? And we can extend it to different type of option pricing.